How y'all doing, Sith Wizards? Today, we're gonna talk about some routine maintenance for the Insonic ESQ-1. Now, the Insonic ESQ-1 is a fantastic instrument, and it allows you to save your user patches, as do most synthesizers. And of course, this is backed up by battery. Now, if you haven't turned your instrument on in a long time, chances are that battery is going to be dead. So here we have a test board that we use in-house. Hasn't been turned on for a little while. I'll go ahead and power it up and we'll see some of the symptoms of a low battery. So as you can see, warning, the battery voltage is low. Now the unit will still power up. You can still edit patches and make patches, but Let's say you make a patch that you really enjoy, you store it, chances are the next time you turn it on, it's not gonna be there. Now this is a very easy to avoid problem, very easy to solve, so we're gonna go over some of those routine maintenance steps. So the first thing I'm gonna do, power down the unit. And these have already had the four screws that go in the corner removed. You will need a uh, Allen wrench for that. When you open it up, there is our battery. So just to get an idea of where I'm at, uh, something that I can do to get eyes on it is go ahead and with the voltmeter, I can measure the voltage. And if you look, our volts are 0 0.07776. It's kind of fluctuating, but more or less, it's less than three volts. Um, Anything lower than three volts is generally gonna put you in that low battery range. This one's almost basically dead, so we'll go ahead and swap it out. So here we have a replacement lithium battery. This is gonna be our Centaur part number 4128. And as you can see, it's clearly labeled three volt lithium battery. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy installed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the key bed. Now there's screws underneath that hold this in place, a total of uh, 10 screws. So it's time to get down and dirty. I'm gonna get underneath this ESQ-1 and unscrew the key bed. Now we see we have a, a ribbon cable that's attached and it's always good to note the orientation of it. The red stripe is facing away from us. We'll need to remember that for when we put the unit back together. Just a light tug. And now you're disconnected. Now if you notice these springs, you wanna keep them as straight as possible. So whenever I set this down, I generally wanna make sure it's leaned up against something, it's protected, it's away. I basically don't want anything to bump into that and possibly bend one of those springs. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is flip over this main board so we can get the battery desoldered. You'll notice that there are several plastic clips holding everything in place, a screw, and additionally, there are nuts on the jacks. So let's go ahead and Flip this around. If you'll notice, for the most part, what we have are these plastic tabs holding the main board in place, plus additionally, one screw. So I'll go ahead and remove this screw first and then I'll work on getting these plastic clips <laughs> out. These generally take a little bit of finagling. Basically, they clip into place, so you just want to compress them a little bit. And then as you compress, pull up. So here we can see, here's my battery. 
and you want to note the orientation. So I have positive facing me, negative away. This battery absolutely needs to go back in in the exact same orientation that it is taken out. So right here are my two terminals. I have my desoldering gun. Uh, for those of you at home, you're more than welcome to use soldering braid. It works just as efficiently. The only thing you need to be careful with is not to overheat the battery. Now, as we can see, we still have some solder up at the top. Sometimes what I like to do is I can kind of press on this. I can, it'll, it'll get the uh, solder liquid again. And when I do that, it gives me the ability to kind of wiggle or jostle the tab loose. Now see this board, it's been worked on before and this battery has been changed previously. You'll note that there's a lifted solder pad right there. So that's something we're gonna have to be aware of when we put this other battery back in, you know, go ahead and test for continuity and making sure voltage is getting where it's supposed to go. Like I said, and you'll even notice right here on the board, it's clearly marked. But I like to take pictures with my cell phone beforehand just to be absolutely sure that I'm putting in something the exact same way it's coming back out. This is my new battery, this is my old battery. Those tabs are slightly bent outward so that they reach the solder pads. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is kinda slowly, just gently bend them out and hopefully get to where I need to be. And as you'll see, now it clearly fits. So now that I've flipped it over, I'm holding it taut against the board with my index finger, and then I'll go ahead and solder this in place. And what I like to do is you'll see I've kind of I can hold this with my thumb and I've given myself a little bit of lead. So the solder is coming just past the solder pad. And what I can do is I can push or scoop into the tab. And there you go. And I can do the same thing right over here. Now you'll remember this one had a lifted pad. And so I'm just gonna kind of throw some extra solder in there. It might be a little bit more difficult to get it down in there, but you just wanna be wary of how hot you're getting that battery. Alrighty, now that I have my battery soldered in the correct orientation, I can go ahead and reassemble the unit. Continuing to put back together the unit, and we'll get to fire it up. So here we go. Key bed, red stripe facing away from you. You want to be extra careful not to bend any of these pins, which can be a little bit tricky. But there we go. Yeah, 
that'll slide right back in. All right, so now that I have everything buttoned back up and positioned correctly, we'll go ahead and close her up, give her a test drive. And as you'll notice, there was no low battery warning. You can save patches to your heart's content and they will be there tomorrow. In certain cases, you may need to do a factory reset or initialize. To do that, all you have to do is press record and this first soft button It'll ask you to erase all memory and reinitialize. You can hit yes. There's your software revision. And... Your ESQ1 is good to go.